Welcome back to the Queen City, where we're walking through the Cincinnati Zoo's most monumental project to date. Africa, opened in five phases over the course of eight years, and with the help of an inspirational little icon, has become the face of the Cincinnati Zoo. While this is not the most grandiose recreation of Africa out there, this depiction still manages to represent Africa's diverse animals and habitats with a wide range of species from Africa's savannas, rivers, and deserts. So, let's see if it lives up to the hype. The main entrance is placed almost exactly in the middle of the complex, right next to the Base Camp Cafe, dubbed the greenest restaurant in America. Africa's first habitat is a modest, well-shaded yard for the world's fastest land animal, but we'll see more of them later, so for now we'll head all the way to the right side of the complex to phases 1 and 2. Probably Africa's simplest design, a small lagoon with a mixed group of greater and lesser flamingos, the tallest and smallest of their kind, whose ranges do overlap in the wild. This is actually the zoo's secondary flamingo habitat. A much larger flock of greater flamingos can be found living in the rhino reserve, and they were busy raising a number of fluffy gray chicks on my most recent visit. Placed behind Africa's flamingos is the Giraffe Ridge, which predates the rest of Africa by five years and is best viewed from an elevated viewing deck that is somewhat separated from the rest of Africa's exhibits. Since the ridge's opening in 2008, seven endangered Maasai giraffe calves have been born, with the most recent births occurring in 2019. Back on the ground level, tucked at the back of Africa is the Cheetah Encounter. I'm not sure if every show is the same, but the one I saw revolved around the staff trying to identify the culprit who left a dead zebra carcass on the savanna. With the help of the wild pups and the crowd, the staff clears the names of several suspects including a domestic cat, a red river hog, and a easily distracted serval, all of whom, after being cleared themselves, help determine the true guilty party, which is of course revealed to be a cheetah. While the encounter was clearly geared towards kids, it was still fun, educational, and well worth the 25 minutes it took to watch. Backtracking across from the ground level views of the giraffes is a set of tall, glass windows that bring you up close to the African lion. A male lion's mane is a symbol of his status, with large, darker manes like John's here being a sign of a healthy, dominant male who will be more attractive to females. John and his mate Imani arrived together in Cincinnati with a breeding recommendation in 2013 and fulfilled that duty a year later when Amani gave birth to a litter of three cubs. The pair have been alone again for a while now, but still know how to put on a show. A lion's roar can reach up to 114 decibels, which is almost as loud as a jet taking off. This sound can travel up to 5 miles, which is important since a lion's territory can be as large as 100 square miles. Their domain here is also viewable across a shallow moat, which flows into the plains. Completed in 2014, what this savanna lacks in size, it makes up for in viewing opportunities and liveliness, since it is consistently one of the most active mixed species exhibits I've come across on my travels. Since the lineup has changed over the years, we'll begin with some former residents like Mike the White Bearded Wildebeest, who joined the Plains in 2017 and was a crowd favorite for several years before moving on to another facility. In 2021, I also saw Thompson's Gazelles and the Graceful Impala, as these two males sparred over non-existent females, since until recently, this savanna had a strict no-breeding policy. 
However, by 2023, all three of these species were gone, leaving the lesser kudu as the plains only mammal. And last April, the zoo's resident male Hobbs received two new girlfriends in the form of Fiorda and her daughter Sabi. Given Hobbs' behavior on my visit, I can't say I was surprised when the zoo announced the birth of a lesser kudu calf in January of 2024. The East African native lesser kudu uses the thin white stripes on its coat to blend in with the woodlands and thickets they seek out for protection. To enhance this camouflage, they may remain motionless for long stretches at a time. While the savanna may now be low on mammals, the growing kudu herd is surrounded by seven varieties of African birds, including the saddle-billed stork, the East African or grey-crowned crane, of course it's impossible to miss ostriches Pam and Myrtle. Pam was among the savanna's first residents, while Myrtle joined her in 2021. They tower over others like the 20-inch long Kenyan crested guinea fowl. Usually lining the moat are the pink-backed pelicans, who inhabit the lakes, rivers, and swamps across sub-Saharan Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. Their wingspan can stretch over 9 feet, which, believe it or not, is actually on the smaller side for a pelican. Finally, there's the vultures, who include Bubba, the inquisitive Rupel's griffin vulture, another longtime resident of the savanna, who has acquired a friend somewhere along the way, though I couldn't find their name. Their kind has declined rapidly since 2004, going from a species of least concern to critically endangered in just 8 years. The larger, lappet-faced vulture is doing a bit better, and is represented in Cincinnati by siblings Agra and Ishtar. The imposing lappet-faced vulture has an incredibly strong beak, and can tear off skin, tendons, and ligaments from carcasses that are too tough for smaller scavengers. The final view of the plains is placed right next to the main viewing windows for the Painted Dog Valley. Painted dogs are Africa's largest canine, however they are still smaller compared to some other African carnivores, which may be why painted dogs are mostly diurnal, to avoid confrontation with predators that are more active at night. The painted dog's true strength is in numbers. A single pack may have as many as 60 members, and it can take over 20 painted dogs working together to bring down some of their larger prey targets. As of 2020, the valley was home to 8 painted dogs, Mother Akili and 7 of her offspring. Opposite the Painted Dog Valley is this Africa's smallest residence. Representing Africa's southern deserts is the slender-tailed meerkat who came from Disney's Animal Kingdom in 2015. Meerkats are very intelligent, sophisticated little critters, and are often regarded as one of the Animal Kingdom's most adorable animals. However, they're not always as cute as you'd think. In fact, one of their biggest threats is each other. One 2016 study found that between clashes with rival clans and squabbles within a group, 20% of meerkat deaths were caused by other meerkats. And on that fun note, we've arrived at Africa's final phase, added in 2016, the Hippo Cove, where crowds flock to see the world's most famous Nile Tilapia, who keep the water clean by feeding on the waste produced by the zoo's family of hippos. The cove opened with male Henry from Dickerson Park Zoo and female Bibi of St. Louis. The pair did arrive with a breeding recommendation and clearly wasted no time since BB gave birth just six months later on January 24, 2017. The only slight complication was that BB delivered her calf six weeks before she was due. The calf was born severely undersized, and although the situation looked bleak, the care team stepped in offering around the clock hair to the little hippo, and Fiona pulled through becoming known as the little hippo who could. Her story became an inspiration to millions. Fiona is now 7 years old and weighing over 2,500 pounds, which is still a little petite for her age, but she is happy, healthy, and no longer the little hippo in the family. With Henry passing away in 2017, Phoebe received a new boyfriend in 2021 with the arrival of Tucker, a massive 4,500 pound bull from San Francisco. 
Despite the zoo's assurance that there were no immediate plans for breeding, they apparently forgot to include Tucker and BB in those meetings, or maybe BB just has that effect on the bulls. Since just seven months after Tucker's arrival, the zoo announced BB was pregnant with her second calf, and on August 3rd, 2022, the pair welcomed baby Fritz, bringing the zoo's hippo bloat up to four members. From what I saw last summer, Fritz is a typical mischievous toddler and especially likes following around and pestering his dad. Female hippos are pregnant for just eight months, which is a remarkably short gestation for such a large animal. During her first pregnancy with Fiona, Bibi became the first hippo to receive an ultrasound, since the species has historically been difficult to train. Baby hippos are typically born underwater, weighing between 55 and 100 pounds, and must quickly make it to the surface for their first breath. Since hippos do spend so much of their time in the water, calves are able to nurse underwater without taking in water. In the wild, a dominant bull like Tucker may preside over anywhere between 20 to 100 other hippos all living within his territory. These bulls engage in awe-inspiring but violent battles with rival males to maintain their territory, which might be what Tucker is starting to teach little Fritz about here. While Nile hippo populations are faring better than their pygmy cousins, the species is still listed as vulnerable due to human encroachment and hunting for their fat and ivory. Fortunately, despite these threats, the IUCN reports the current Nile hippo population as stable. And that brings us to the end of the Cincinnati Zoo's successful attempt to bring the beautiful landscapes and wildlife of Africa to Ohio. Zoo director Thane Maynard stated that the zoo hoped visitors would leave feeling connected to Africa and inspired to help save wildlife. When we return to Cincinnati, we'll be entering into the world of birds. Normally, I would conclude the video by showing a short preview of the next exhibit tour, but for the first time, I can't because the next tour hasn't actually been filmed yet. The good news is that means it will be from one of the three new zoos that will be debuting on my channel over the next couple months. Thank you for watching.